Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more current uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so if you do consider a drop your likes and if you do consider a uh, subscriber to the channel um, as always. So the first talk of the development um, I'm going to give you an update on um, is in regards uh, to Bruno Fernandes um, as they have been um, updating you um, on a regular basis. So now uh, reportedly uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has urged uh, Ed Woodward you know, to speed up uh, the signing uh, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes so we do obviously you know, want to uh, get uh, this uh, deal uh, finalised. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, once our transfer business, you know, completed uh, by, uh, the, uh, by uh, the beginning um, of next month um, and all that, I think there's about 48 uh, days left, um, or 47, 47 days left um, until uh, the current uh, transfer window uh, shuts. But obviously, you know, reports um, have confirmed that earlier on uh, this week, you know, Manchester United um, have met up, you know, with Bruno Fernandes, um, agent, um, obviously over discussing, you know, Fernandes's, uh, you know, potential switch uh, to Old Trafford uh, this summer, because obviously, you know, we do, we, you do know that we've uh, been uh, heavily uh, linked with him and all that. I think, you know, Manchester United um, are considered um, as the favourites, you know, to uh, get him um, a deal um, over the line for him. Obviously, recently, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, came out and he basically said he's attracted to the history and mystique um, of Manchester United and all that. But I think, you know, we are set to put an offering offer, offer in for him. I think he did say we was willing to offer him um, around uh, £49 million. Uh, pounds. Uh, but I think Sporting Lisbon uh, do want um, at least um, around uh, £62 million. Pounds. So it's very essential that we do uh, get uh, the deal um, over the line for him. I don't think we've really, you know, stepped up our interest um, as yet because obviously, you know, we're focusing on getting the deal uh, fully finalised uh, from Wan-Bissaka then I think obviously you know we're going to want to then uh, get the uh, deal uh, finalised uh, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes but he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of uh, transfer speculation you know quite a few teams um, have inquired um, about um, his services obviously as uh, reports have um, you know reflected out uh, this week you know saying that obviously you know Tottenham have been in negotiations uh, with his agent um, and all that um, yeah, Tottenham have been in negotiations with his agent. I think it was on Wednesday that, you know, Bruno Fernandes' um, agent um, had actually you know, been um, in London, you know, negotiating uh, with Tottenham and all that. Because obviously he has been um, on Tottenham's um, agenda because obviously, you know, Tottenham have got quite a few players um, on their agenda uh, this summer because obviously, you know, Tottenham haven't done any transfer activity in the last uh, couple of uh, windows. The last player they signed was Lucas Mora, you know, back in uh, January 2018. And obviously, you know, Mitchell Pochettino uh, wants her uh, back in uh, this summer. And obviously, Christian Eriksen is linked to a move away uh, from Tottenham. And obviously, you know, if he goes, Tottenham um, are going to want um, replacement for him um, and all that but yeah Tottenham um, have definitely you know, stepped up uh, their interest um, in Bruno Fernandes obviously you know, reports have reflected out this week you know saying that Liverpool have put a bid in for him of around 45 million euros I think that equates uh, to around 40 million um, in pound uh, sterling um, and all that but it has been mainly Manchester United and Manchester City yeah, that have been uh, battling out uh, for um, his services I think City were only willing to pay up to 47 million pounds for his services but it did say City were willing to offer uh, you know offload a couple of their players um, as part of the deal but it got, got confirmed that uh, City you know, have withdrawn uh, their their interest they are no longer in now for Bruno Fernandes but since City have opted out of the race you know Tottenham have, you know, have stepped up their interest you know Liverpool um, of course um, have been in there for him but the Portuguese press have reported you know we are still considered um, as the favourites you know to uh, currently you know, get uh, the players their signature but it did report out quite a few weeks back you know we was willing to pay um, up to uh, £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his services but he is primarily an attacking uh, midfielder obviously we would see him um, as a good adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pobber because I think it's looking likely that Paul Pobber um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, the football club so that midfield Field area, you know, is one of the um, you know, you know, pivotal um, areas, of course, uh, where we do need to uh, strengthen up, and we need someone to come in who can score goals um, in that midfield um, and all that. And you know, Bruno Fernandes, you know, would be definitely you nowhere know, uh, the right solution because he's got goals in him and all that. His movement, you know, is very, very good, and I do believe you know he would uh, rejuvenate uh, the team. He has been at Sporting Lisbon um, a couple of uh, seasons. Let's be honest, he hasn't really uh, played uh, to the highest level um, as yet. Um, but yeah, he did spend the majority um, of his career um, in Italy, you know, when he was younger, you know, with the likes of San Pandaria um, and Londonese um, and all that, you know, did uh, Bruno Fernandes. But he has been widely spoken about, you know, throughout uh, the course um, of this window. He's only had 24 uh, years in the so he's going to fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer strategy, you know, perfectly. Because obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to develop a squad um, of young, hungry, um, homegrown talent um, and all that. And I do believe he'll fit the Manchester United agenda and all that. And I think he's had a good couple of years at Sporting Lisbon, like I said. And I do believe he can come and replicate this form um, in the Premier League, you know, uh, with Manchester United. And I think he'll exceed um, expectation levels um, in the Premier League but maybe Bruno Fernandes um, is going to be um, our third signing because obviously we want to get the deal fully finalised there for Anwan Bissaka then I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's priorities of course are to get a centre back in and also you know to uh, you know, get um, a midfielder in um, and all that but with our man Bissaka, you know, it's looking very imminent anyway. You know, he's going to be um, our second uh, signing uh, this summer. Obviously, I have been giving you an update um, about him um, on a regular uh, basis. It did initially say, you know, that we wanted, you know, our man Bissaka's transfer, you know, completed uh, by the end um, of this weekend. You know, we wanted it completed uh, within uh, the next uh, 48 hours um, and all that. But obviously, reports uh, came out uh, yesterday. Um, I, was, I was reading uh, from the Daily Mail and it basically said, you know, we we was on the verge of agreeing an initial £42.5 million fee uh, with Crystal Palace for our man Bissaka. Obviously, I do presume 
presume there's going to be series um, of add-ons um, included because obviously, you know, that could rise it to around £60 million because obviously, you know, Crystal Palace um, are demanding, you know, they want um, at least um, £60 million uh, for Anwan Masaka. But we do know he's been one of our uh, main priority targets. You know, he has been one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, prime targets and he's um, only uh, 21 uh, years um, of age and he's uh, predominantly um, a right-back. But, you know, Anwan Masaka, you know, did inform, you know, Crystal Palace, you know, that he does uh, want to uh, join uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. Obviously, we've already had uh, two bids, you know, turned down for Anwan Masaka. Obviously, the last bid we had turned down was £50 million. Obviously, you know, it wasn't £50 million, um, up front we'd offered. It was £35 million up front with £50 million in add-ons. But obviously, you know, Crystal Palace didn't like uh, the structure of the offer, so obviously they turned it down. Obviously, the first bid we had turned down uh, was obviously, you know, £40 million. Uh, pounds. But yeah, he's um, our top priority. Um, he's Anwan Bissaka. Obviously, you know, him coming to Manchester United is going to rejuvenate his career. Of course, um, it's going to take um, his football and uh, career uh, to the next level um, and all that. Um, but yeah, he's informed Crystal Palace, you know, that he does uh, want to uh, join uh, Manchester United this summer. But the report, I think it broke out uh, earlier on this week, you know, this was actually, you know, stemming from Duncan Castles. And he basically said, you know, Manchester United um, have agreed um, a world record fee uh, for Anwan Masak. And it did say the fee uh, was around uh, £55 million. Uh, pounds. And obviously, you know, that would make him the most expensive fullback in football history. And also, you know, making the most um, expensive, you know, British uh, defender. But I do believe he's going to be, you know, coming uh, to Manchester United. Um, obviously, so far, he has spent the entirety of his career with Crystal Palace. You know, he's been a Crystal Palace player, you know, since uh, the age um, of 11 and all that, obviously graduated from their youth system and initially when he was younger, um, he was um, an out-and-out -out winner, but as he was developing um, and all that, you know, he got rotated um, as a right-back he only made his senior debut for Crystal Palace um, in February um, of last year and um, obviously, you know, last season established, established himself um, as a first team uh, regular and reflecting on his impressive performances last season, I think he won uh, Palace's uh, player player um, of the year, but he has still got three years left um, on his contract with Crystal Palace, uh, of, like I said, I think he's, he's made about 42 uh, senior um, appearances uh, for Crystal Palace but it's looking likely you know, we are going to currently you know, uh, get um, a deal um, over the line for him um but yeah, we did basically say, you know, we wanted it uh, completed uh, within the next 48 hours. So I do believe it will be probably sometime next week that his transfer to Manchester United um, is fully, you know, uh, completed. But he is uh, predominantly a right back, like I said, he will be good with players and for Antonio Valencia. Obviously, you know, Valencia's left Manchester United um, after, well, he served uh, 10 years there uh, with Manchester United. So he was, he was a long serving player with the club. I think he'll be a great upgrade uh, to Ashley Young. And I think he'll be a good uh, cover up uh, for uh, Diego Ardalot. So we want to get the deal first off line from Wamasaka. Then I think we'll step our interest up in Bruno Fernandes. But initially, Solskjaer has a Jed Woodward, you know, to speed up, uh, you know, uh, you know, for the, the signing um, of uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes and all that. But like I said, you know, uh, you know, when we do get Anwan Bissaka on the board, um, I do believe it's probably, you know, going to take our, well, we're set to get him for around probably 55 or 60 million pounds or something um, like that. So it'll probably take our Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's net spender to around uh, 70 70 odd million pounds, you know, so far uh, this summer um, on two players because obviously, you know, we've already got Daniel James um, on the board, you know, for 18 uh, million pounds and all that. But obviously, as you all know, reports have been coming out this week saying that we've only been given 100 million pounds uh, to spend uh, this summer. I don't really believe that, you know, to be quite honest, because obviously, um, 100 million pounds obviously, you know, is not enough, you know, to address uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. And if that was the case, we only had 100 uh, million uh, pounds. Um, obviously, we'll get on one sack, and that means we've only got 27 million pounds left, you know, to get a central defender in, a couple of new additions in midfield. Field, the right winning and the striker in them and all that. So you know, I don't, I just, I just don't think we're being given a hundred million pounds. I think initially, you know, we have, we've actually, you know, been given around uh, two hundred million pounds. It did explain why we said we've reportedly been given a hundred million pounds because obviously, you know, we haven't, you know, we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer for next season. But it did. Be, I, I, if this is true, though, I think when we do get Anwan Bissaka, I think then we'll have to obviously, you know, consider, you know, selling players, you know, of course, uh, before we uh, buy uh, players um, and all that. But Solskjaer does want to bring um, at least uh, five uh, new um, additions to the squad. You know. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now um, has confirmed that he does potentially you know, want to uh, sell uh, Paul Pogba. The main factor reason why he wants to sell Paul Pogba because obviously, you know, he wants to re he obviously, you know, wants to uh, help uh, raise uh, funds um, and all that, and obviously, you know, uh, rebuild uh, the squad. Um, but basically now, um, he does uh, want to work and, you know, uh, sell uh, Paul Pogba. Um, I want to give you some uh, news um, about Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester. Now, uh, more things um, is currently um, updated about him. I have been updating you about Harry Maguire um, on a regular uh, basis. Now, uh, reportedly, I think he's on the brink um, of joining uh, Manchester City. Um, obviously, you know, Manchester City, um, I've seen him um, as a replacement uh, for Vincent uh, Company. Now, we do know it has been Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that have been uh, battling out uh, for um, his services. You know, Harry Maguire has been relent relentlessly linked to uh, 
have moved her to Old Trafford, you know, since last summer. And obviously, you know, the rumours have continued to persist since then. Because obviously, Harry Maguire was one of the players, of course, uh, that Jose Mourinho wanted. But obviously, reflecting back last summer, um, obviously, you know, we didn't uh, get as a uh, number one uh, targets because obviously, you know, the board weren't back in the signings that, you know, Jose Mourinho, you know, wanted to recommend to come in. And I think Leicester were demanding that they wanted around 70 odd uh, million pounds last summer. But obviously, of course, uh, we were reluctant, you know, to pay that. But obviously, we do know he's a, a central uh, defender, he's Harry Maguire. Obviously, you know, we're looking to get someone that can partner alongside Victor Lindelof in our back line. I do believe Harry Maguire, you know, would complement Victor Lindelof um, in our back line, you know, really, really well. He'd blend in with him really, really well um, and all that. But I think it's looking likely anywhere there that Harry Maguire um, is currently, you know, going to be going to Manchester City. But like I said, we've, you know, we these def you can see the deficiencies, um, you know, that we've got uh, defensively and all that. That was proven last season because we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League uh, last season in 38 Premier League games. I think that's our highest total um, in 40 uh, years. So that just proves, you know, the issues uh, we've currently uh, got uh, defensive. And like I said, we've got to get our, you know, number one targets this summer because obviously um, we need to see vast improvements, you know, going on um, into the into this season because last season was very disappointing. You know, we, did, we finished six. You know, we didn't uh, win many um, silverware, but, you know, we haven't won any silverware. Um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons. Obviously, we haven't won the Premier League you know, since 2013. Obviously, of course, uh, that was in um, Alex Ferguson's uh, last season. So, there is a lot of uh, company, you know, uh, catching um, up to do. So, I think this is why we've got to get the right recruitment this summer because analysing our recruitment, you know, policy, it's not uh, really, really good, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you. But quite a few people have, you know, uh, have suggested, you know, that we should be uh, sensible with our recruitment this summer. But I think we are actually moving away from the policy um, of signing uh, them well-established um, uh, players because we have got a history, you know, of uh, spending uh, big on, um, on players um, like as you all could, you know, especially um, in recent years, you know, Pobre 89 million, you know, Lukaku, of course, 75 million pounds. But yeah, we definitely know where I need um, a central uh, defender. And I think Harry Maguire, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution. But like I said, I think his, you know, preference um, is to uh, join uh, Manchester City because obviously Harry Maguire wants to rejuvenate his career and all that. Obviously, you know, Manchester City are the dominant force um, in England um, at the moment. And obviously, I think Harry Maguire, you know, believes he will flourish um, under uh, Pep Guardiola's guidance. But I've just been reading uh, the Daily Mail and they've basically said, you know, Manchester City um, are close uh, to uh, are close to uh, to uh, sealing a world record fee of around uh, eighty million pounds uh, for Harry Maguire. Um, obviously, you know this would make him uh, the most expensive defender um, in world football. Obviously, the most expensive defender um, at the moment is Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk, who, of course, you know, Liverpool uh, paid £75 million. So, and obviously, you know, he's addressed Liverpool's defensive deficiencies, you know, uh, really, really well. Um... But and also this will also I think making uh, the most um, expensive you know uh, British uh, defender and all that. Uh, but yeah, it's looking likely he's going to be going to Manchester City. I think also City are preparing you know to pay him around uh, two hundred and eighty thousand pounds a week. And I think reportedly you know Harry Maguire um, has agreed uh, this deal with around two hundred and eighty thousand pounds a week. So this is obviously what he's going to earn um, at Manchester City. This is just actually you know come uh, from the Daily Mail. But I was reading reports um, a couple of days ago and it did say City have actually you know scheduled um, you know a medical uh, for Harry Maguire. And I think he's set to have um, his uh, medical uh, with Manchester. To City, so it's looking likely he's going to be uh, going uh, to Man City and all that. Obviously, they're going to see him as a good uh, replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company. But reports uh, were reflecting out um, early on uh, this week, you know, saying that we was very confident that we could beat Manchester City to the signing of him. It did say, you know, we believe we can outbid Manchester City to his services and all that, because obviously we was willing to pay uh, eighty million pounds. And obviously, at one point, City were reluctant, you know, to uh, pay um, up to eighty million pounds because initially it did say, you know, Manchester City um, only rate him at around uh, fifty million pounds um, and all that. Like I said. Looking at it, ultimately, you know, Leicester don't want to sell him because Leicester are much of the central player he is. And, you know, the main fact the reason why they don't want to sell him because they've known how much central player he is, like I said. But, you know, obviously Leicester have priced him out of the transfer market because obviously, you know, they demand an extortionate amount for him. You know, some reports said they want 80 million, even some reports were speculating saying, you know, they want um, around their 90 million pounds. So, like I said, they have a price to him out of the transfer market. I think City getting him, obviously, it's going to be their first major sign this summer. And I think City may have to, um, you know, move Otto Mendy on. So, obviously, you know, Harry Maguire can, you know, be a short first team footballer week in, week out uh, with Manchester City and all that. But it did basically say, you know, Ed Woodward uh, was willing to pay up to 80 million million pounds uh, for um, his services. He even did say we was willing to offer him a contract, you know, worth up to around three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week. Um like I said, um, he's 26 uh, years um, of age, um, he's Harry Maguire, plus um, he's British. And obviously, uh, there's quite a few British players um, on our agenda. Like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does want to recruit uh, British uh, talent uh, to Manchester United this summer. But 26, in his prime, still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, is Harry Maguire. He signed a new long-term contract uh, with Leicester last summer. So he's under contract with them um, until 2023. And he has been at Leicester a couple of seasons. Um, obviously, I think he's played about 76 games for them in all competitions. I think he's played with 69 of them, obviously, you know, have come um, in the Premier League, you know. But 
Leicester, obviously, if this deal, you know, goes through, which according to his reports, it's looking likely, you know, Leicester, of course, are going to make a huge profit on um, the player because obviously, you know, Leicester got him for around £17 million uh, from Hull um, a couple of uh, years ago. But he has done really, really well um, in the Premier League, uh, like I said, um, as Harry Maguire. I think in total he's actually you know, made um, 101 um, appearances. Uh, but yeah, so I don't think you know Manchester United are currently you know, going to be getting him, even though reports are still saying you know, that we're in uh, for Harry Maguire. He, even reports were coming out um, early on uh, this week, you know, saying that we was willing to offload one or two of our players, you know, to uh, Leicester as part of the deal for Harry Maguire. So obviously this could convince you know Leicester, you know, to currently uh, lower their price tag for him um, and all that. One of the players we was willing to offer uh, was reportedly you know, Andres Pereira and all that. Obviously Andres Pereira is one of um, our fringe players. Uh, Andres Pereira did play uh well especially towards the back end um uh, of last uh Towards the back end um, of last season, uh, you know, reflecting on the injuries uh, that we currently uh, sus uh, sustained, we had, there was quite a lot of injuries last season. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know, had to rotate quite a few times, had to play uh, the fringe players, but he did initially say anyway when he came in, he was going to give um, everybody uh, the chance. Um, Andres Pereira is only unknown; he's 23 years of age. Um, obviously, you know, he had loan spells in Spain with Granada um, and Valencia um, and all that. But he did say we was willing to offer him as part of the deal for Harry Maguire. I also said we could offer Eric Bay and Rojo um, as part of the deal uh, for uh, Harry Maguire and all that. Um, but I think it's looking like. Anyway, um, he's going to be going to Manchester City. I think he didn't, as you say, City was set to sign him for 65 million. But I think now, according to the Daily Mail, there's been a change of senior City are uh, going to obviously you know, uh, get him uh, for the world record fee um, and all that, and set to get him for around uh, 80 million uh, pounds. Um, but yeah, I don't think you know, Harry Maguire you know, will be uh, coming uh, to Manchester United. Um, obviously, as I've been um, updating you um, on a regular basis um, as well, um, in regards, you know, to uh, Paul Pogba now, um, it's looking likely, like I said, uh, Paul Pogba um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, the football club. Obviously, like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does want to sell uh, Paul Pogba now. Um, Obviously, you know, to help the club, you know, raise funds, like I said, and uh, rebuild uh, the squad. And I do definitely we can get over a hundred odd million pounds uh, for Paul Pogba. We initially, you know, indicated that Paul Pogba um, is not over sale, and it did basically say we would accept a bid in the region of around 150 or 160 million pounds. But obviously, you know, this is a figure uh, that Real Madrid, um, of course, um, are not willing to meet. But look. Paul Pogba has been relentlessly you know, linked to a move away uh, from Old Trafford. Relentlessly linked to a move away uh, from Old Trafford. Um, obviously, you know, it has been Juventus um, and Real Madrid uh, that have been uh, battling out uh, for uh, his services. Obviously, Paul Pogba did confirm uh, last Sunday uh, that he'd uh, told their uh, reporters um, in Tokyo that I was obviously you know, seeking for the new challenge. And he actually you know, publicly um, admitted this, you know, that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United um, and all that. Probably you know, wants to uh, rejuvenate uh, his career. And he even did say that Paul Pogba was even willing to go on strike you know, to force a move away uh, from Manchester United but I have been, in, I've been uh, reading their reports uh, this week and you know they've been basically you know saying that you know uh, you know Manchester United are willing to offer a long term contract you know worth up to 500 grand a week I don't really see the point in this to be quite honest with because obviously why would we want to um, offer him you know big money if he's you know if he's not playing him on good enough uh, players um, at Manchester United um, and all that but he did say we was, we've offered him his £500,000 a week on this long term contract and all that Paul probably still got two years left um, on his deal uh, with an option uh, to extend it by further end his current deal He's on about two hundred and ninety thousand pounds a week, but it was initially in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan, you know, to actually you know build them um, aside them um, around uh, Paul Popper. Um, it also said that we was willing to hold Paul Pop hand Paul Popper um, a loyalty uh, bonus. Uh, I think we were set to hand in this payment. I think um, at the beginning um, of next month, uh, you know, this loyalty uh, bonus uh, payment um, and all that. I think it's worth um, almost around uh, four uh, million uh, pounds. But yeah, it's been relentlessly into a move to Real Madrid um, and Juventus. But for a long time, his likely destination um, has been uh, Real Madrid. Um, obviously, you know he's. Uh, first choice preference, um, of course, um, has been uh, Real Madrid because obviously it's one of uh, Zinedine Zidane's you know, main uh, targets. Obviously, so far, Real Madrid have got uh, five players um, on the board uh, this summer and all that. But Zinedine Zidane knows uh, Paul Pogba will help them uh, with their uh, rebuilding project. And it's initially in Zinedine Zidane's, it's in Zinedine Zidane's plans you know, to put Paul Pogba alongside Casemiro um, in his uh, Real Madrid uh, midfield. But Real Madrid are not keen on a straight cash payment because they're not willing to pay up to the £150 million pounds, uh, for um, his services. Uh, but Paul Pogba did say, you know, a while back, you know, about his dreams of playing for Real Madrid. He did say at one point, you know, he wants to play for Real Madrid. But I think maybe the couple of main factor reasons why he wants to leave Manchester United because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players, you know. Maybe he wants to be in Champions League football. Maybe, you know, he wants to be uh, winning a uh, silverware um, and all that. And um, obviously, you know, he's now experiencing this um, at Manchester United. So maybe they're the couple of main factor reasons why he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the club. Um, 
But like I said, at least in the last couple of weeks, you know, it says uh, Juventus um, have been in there for Paul Pogba. Obviously, a lot of reports have uh, come out uh, last week, you know, saying that the, Ju the Juventus director um, had travelled uh, to uh, uh, London, you know, to hold negotiation with Manchester United over the possibility of re-signing Paul Pogba. Obviously, Juventus um, had been in negotiations with his um, agent, uh, Raliola and all that. I don't think Juventus have made, like, any kind of um, formal bidding um, as yet. Um, but like I said, probably more than likely, you know, Juventus would probably have to offload at least one or two of their essential players, you know, to fund uh, the move uh, for Paul Pogba, because I don't think, you know, Juventus, you know, will be um, able, you know, to um, afford uh, Paul Pogba um, and all that um, outright. Uh, obviously, you know, based on the huge transfer fee, you know, that we have, uh, you know, currently uh, put on him. Um, but yeah, it is Juventus um, and Real Madrid uh, that are battling out uh, for them as services. But the Juventus director recently came out and, you know, he basically explained how much, you know, Juventus uh, love Paul Pogba because obviously, you know, he did um, have four good years um, in Turin and all that. You know, he exceeded um, expectation levels. He did really, really well, but he hasn't really replicated this form, you know, since he did uh, make uh, the return uh, to Manchester United. Uh, like I said, you know, we did pay £89 million pounds for him. Um, obviously, um, our most um, expensive uh, signing um, and all that. Um, but obviously, you know, Paul Pogba was subject to a lot of transfer speculation last year, you know, based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho and all that and Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes when Jose Mourinho were left um, obviously Paul Pogba with the club um, has won the Europa League and League Cup with us obviously that came in his second season at Manchester United obviously came um, in Jose Mourinho's uh, first season I think there was also talks about him going to Juventus last year I think there was uh, obviously you know Barcelona were in for him you know back in uh, January um, and all that but yeah um, like I said you know um, you know um, Paul Popper's uh, been um, at Manchester United, you know, where uh, three years. I think it also came out quite a few weeks back saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, was willing to um, offer him uh, the captain set um, in a bid, you know, to uh, convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club. But like I said, it's looking like he's going to be leaving, so it's very essential uh, that we do uh, get him um, a replacement for him. But I think, you know, we'll sell him Paul Pop, you know, us selling Ramlo Lukaku. I think we can probably, you know, raise him um, around uh, two hundred million pounds there, um, at least, you know, for their uh, current uh, departure, departures. Because like I said, we've already been given a hundred million, so when we do get the deal finalised from Wan Bissaka, we've obviously got to. Then uh, you know, did basically say you know further spending you know will be dependent on you know uh, you know the money raised by you know players' uh, sales. So we can raise probably around two hundred million pounds at least for the departure term of Paul Popa um, and Romelu Lukaku. But like I said, I think the good replacement for Paul Popa would definitely you know be uh, Bruno uh, Fernandez and all that. Um, obviously, there's been talks going on um, about James Madison uh, quite recently, you know, uh, from Leicester um, and all that. I, like I said, I was reading Sports Merlot the other day. You know, they was basically, you know, saying that, you know, um, well, I think James Madison has actually, you know, notified um, his agent that he actually, you know, wants to uh, meet up uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So he's probably scheduled the meeting, you know, to meet up uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and all that. Because it allegedly said that James Madison um, is interested um, in a summer move uh, to Manchester United. Now, reports were coming out about this, you know, three or four weeks ago um, and all that. And I think also James Madison would be a good adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. He's only had uh, 22 uh, years um, of age, you know, plus um, he's British. And um, he did say, you know, he's allegedly interested in the move. But like I said, it came out about this three or four weeks ago. And, you know, it basically said, you know, we'd identified him as a, well, we emerged him as a priority target. He did say we'd made initial contact over the po over a poss possible move uh, to Old Trafford uh, this summer. And it did say, you know, Leicester uh, want um, around uh, £68 million. Pounds. But like I said, I think Manchester United would be more than happy, you know, to uh, pay uh, £68 million uh, pounds, uh, for um, his services. Obviously, he's had a year um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously, you know, his debut season was last season uh, with Leicester. Um, and he did uh, really, really well. You know, did uh, James uh, Madison, he was involved in 14 goals. You know, he created more chances than any other player um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously, you know, Leicester uh, got him uh, last summer from Norwich uh, for around £20 million. Pounds. I still believe that James Madison um, has still got uh, four years uh, left um, on his uh, deal um, and all that. Um, but yeah, really, really a good player um, indeed. And he's, like I said, primarily um, an attacking uh, midfielder. Uh, initially, when he was younger, he began his uh, career uh, with Coventry. And I think quite a few teams uh, were tracking him, you know, when he was um, a teenager um, at Coventry. Also had a loan spell um, in Scotland, you know, uh, with Aberdeen and all that. Uh, but yeah, it does reportedly say, you know, he's, you know he's, he wants to uh, meet up uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, as he has uh, made it uh, clear, James Madison. So I think James Madison would be a good replacement with Paul Pobbe, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, obviously, you know... Um, I think he'd definitely be a good uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. Yori Tillemans uh, from Leicester, like I said, you know, a lot of reports were reflecting out uh, last week, you know, saying that we was uh, in uh, for uh, Yori uh, Tillemans. This is what, you know, uh, basically uh, said. It said we'd revived our interest. It did basically say, you know, we'd been in negotiations, uh, you know, uh, with Yori Tillemans' um, agent um, over the possible deal um, and all that, because I like uh, Yori Tillemans um, a lot. You know, quite a few teams um, have inquired um, about um, his services. Um, 
like I said, you know, Leicester are keen on getting him on a permanent deal, and this is why, obviously, you know, Leicester um, have been um, in talks, you know, uh, you know, with Monaco over getting him on a permanent uh, deal and all that. Because I think he's initially, uh, I think Leicester are orchestrating on, you know, actually, you know, partner, partnering, you know, uh, you know, Yari Tillemans with James Madison um, in their midfield because they probably would, you know, complement each other, you know, really, really well. Yari Tillemans has had about five or six months of experience um, under his belt in the Premier League, and he was very impressive. You know, he showed some, he showed some uh, very impressive performances, you know, throughout um, his, you know six months loan spell you know with Leicester he had been like I said he had been on loan with Leicester since January um, but obviously now he's no longer on loan with Leicester because obviously his loan spell has come to an end and he has uh, returned uh, to Monaco but obviously you know Yara Tillemans has confirmed he will not be uh, staying here with Monaco uh, next season um, and all that but like I said he's only 22 uh, years of age I think he's mainly a box box midfielder also uh, can play him as an attack of a midfielder um, and all that also Tottenham have inquired about his services you know Manchester City um, have inquired um, about um, his services and all that so again I think um, he would be um, a good uh, player with uh, for Paul Popper. Um Obviously, as I've been updating you regularly um, as well, you know, about uh, Giovanni uh, Lo Celso uh, from Real uh, Betis. Now, uh, obviously, it does, I think it came out early on this week saying that Manchester United uh, were in for him. And I think, obviously, I think it is one uh, one of uh, Tottenham's uh, main targets as well as uh, Giovanni uh, Lo Celso and all that. Um, obviously, it did get reported out uh, sometime uh, last month. Um, I think it was saying that Tottenham had had a bid turned down for him. I think Tottenham had lodged a bid in around uh, £53 million. Pounds. I think, actually, you know, Real Betis are looking for somewhere in the region of around £70 or £80 million. Pounds of course, if they are willing to sell him, but Giovanni Lo Celso did confirm quite a few weeks back there that he does. Uh, he's keen on making another uh, move uh, to Tottenham. Um, but yeah, Tottenham had been in negotiation with Real Betis um, over getting um, a deal uh, concluded and all that. He's only 23 years of age, of course. Um, he is um, Argentinian, Giovanni Lo Celso. He did actually say we wanted to uh, sign him. Um, obviously, you no, know, last season was his first season uh, with Real Betis. Um, obviously, you no, know, well. He spent the majority of uh, the seat of last season on loan uh, with Real uh, Betis, of course. Real Betis got him from PSG last summer. He is now permanently a Real Betis because obviously you no know, Real Betis had made the deal permanent uh, back um, in April and all that. Um, and I think they paid around uh, £20 million. Pounds this. And I think he scored about 16 goals in all competitions for Real Betis last season. Um, obviously, you know, if Real Betis do sell him, obviously, you know, PSG do get a percentage um, of any uh, sale um, and all that. Because, obviously, I think the percentage must be um, around uh, 20%. So, PSG, of course, uh, do uh, benefit from that. I think Giovanni Lo Celso's release cost um, is around uh, £88 million. Pounds. But he also said, you know, we've currently uh, been in for him. So, so many midfielders, um, of course, um, on our agenda. Because we're going to need a replacement for Pogba. We're going to need um, a replacement uh, for uh, Ander Herrera. You know, like I uh, currently um, said. So, like I said, it's looking likely you now that uh, Paul Popper, you know, is currently uh, going to be leaving. But like I said, I expect probably around three or four players to leave Manchester United this summer. Maybe five um, of the tops. I expect Diamond to leave the club. I also expect, you know, Rojo uh, to leave uh, the club. I think we can raise around £25, £30 million, pounds, you know, for the departures um, of Diamond um, and Rojo. Um, obviously, you know, with Smalling and Jones, I think they're probably going to be here next season. But it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving them uh, two uh, new long term uh, contracts. Obviously, you know, they've been two long term employees at the club, you know, Smalling's been here nine years, you know, Jones, um, of course, um, has been here um, eight years, and, you know, like I said, they are too um, inconsistent now, and they're no longer good enough, you know, to uh, represent uh, Manchester United. With Eric Bay, I, I, you know, I do like Eric Bay a lot, you know, don't get me wrong, but I think his Manchester United career has been badly affected, you know, the amount of injuries he sustained, you know, his fallout um, on the managers um, and all that, so I think we probably need to, maybe not this summer, but, you know, maybe next season, maybe next summer or something like that, or January, I suppose, uh, maybe, you know, orchestra Manchester United should orchestrate on the selling um, Eric Bay, you know, to be uh, quite honest. We probably were, we would be open to selling, but we would probably want to recoup the initial £30 million, you know, that we did pay for him, you know, back in uh, 2016 uh, from Villarreal. Um... But like I said, you know, so many um, players um, on our um, agenda. And like I said, I, ho I hope um, it works out um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Like I said, he was a great player for Manchester United uh, for 11 years um, under um, Alex Ferguson. You know, he hasn't really got the experience um, of manager. And this is obviously you know, something uh, that does uh, concern me. Um, not to the highest level, he hasn't got the um, experience um, of manager. He did win a couple of uh, Norwegian uh, titles there with Mould. But, you know, he knows the club inside out, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, like I said. So I, I just hope that he's got that statue, you know, to command us in that position. You know, even watch some of this team in this day and age, you know, grow up. Uh, and develop, you know, when he managed uh, the Manchester United reserve team. But like I said, the only player that's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's um, is Daniel James is, um, at the moment. But obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to fulfil the deficiencies um, in the squad. You know, he wants to build the squad, you know, worthy um, of the club's um, history um, and all that. But I, I do believe our expectations, you know, going on um, into this season will probably be to finish in the top four. But I do believe in the next couple of seasons, um, our aspirations um, is going to be at uh, that top four. You know, like I said, we've been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years. You know, we have been playing catch-up, you know, since Ferguson retired, we've had different managers, we did different philosophies, a hell of a lot of money um, has been um, invested um, into the club um, and all that. Um, 
But like I said, we might have been a toxic club for the last five or six years, but you know, we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. You know, we are the most successful team um, in England, you know, um historically, you know, I don't uh, forget. Um but I do believe, like I said, in the next couple of seasons, our aspirations, you know, will be at that top four. because uh, obviously at the moment, you know, City has tried ahead of us, of course, uh, Liverpool um, of course um our strides um, ahead of us. And I think it's gonna be hard for us to attract players to the elite level because obviously, you know, we're not in Champions League football for next season. Like I said, Champions League football is obviously very pivotal, you know, when you do uh, want to uh, get a uh, you know you uh, number one. Uh, targets um, and all that. Uh, I think it's obviously going to be difficult for Arsenal to have a competitive window because they're not in a Champions League uh, football uh, for their next season. Uh, but players still may want to come to the club because obviously, you know, we are, like I said, we are we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. But I hope it works out under Oligan and Solskjaer. Like I said, we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers. We've already sat three managers, of course, since Alex Ferguson retired. But like I said, regardless of who our manager is, you know, no one is ever, you know, going to follow um, Alex Ferguson's uh, legacy. You know, we're never ever going to achieve them um, of what we achieved them um, under Alex Ferguson. You know, for 20 um, odd years and that's something we've got to accept but we just want to be back you know being um, a competitive elite uh, level of football club um but I think we're a number of years um, off you know, doing this, like I said. Um, but I don't think we'll challenge for the league. I don't think we'll be that. We'll definitely won't win the league next season. I don't even think we, you know, we'll be challenging for the league next season. I think we'll be going uh, for a uh, top four. Uh, you know, some people have said, you know, we can maybe have a chance of winning the league if we get the right players to Manchester United this summer. But I don't see, you know, that uh, currently um, happening. If I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you. Um, but like I said, you know, there's been so many players um, on our agenda, obviously. I updated you um, earlier on, uh, didn't I, um, about uh, Antoine Griezmann uh, for um, Atletico Madrid. Now, we do know uh, Griezmann um, had made an admission, uh, I think it was just um, over, well, it was about a month or so ago. Now, he'd made an admission, you know, saying that he does uh, want to uh, leave um, Atletico Madrid. And obviously, you know, it looks destined he was going to be uh, making uh, the move uh, to Barcelona. But they actually, there had been um, a change um, of scenery because he did basically say Barcelona um, have got reservations, you know, about uh, getting uh, Antoine Griezmann. He did say they had second thoughts about, you know, getting um, Antoine Griezmann. But I've just been reading me some apologies by and he said you know Barcelona actually you know want Griezmann um, and Neymar obviously I think Neymar got sold a couple of years ago to PSG obviously he's the most um, expensive you know, player um, in world football um, is Neymar um, but like I said he did come out a couple uh, week or so ago you know saying that you know we was uh, set to hijack Barcelona's uh, move for Antoine Griezmann and he did even say you know we was willing to uh, smash him out on transfer record and he did basically say you know we was willing to offer Griezmann um, around their 95 uh, million uh, pounds because he did initially say you know we'd made and he still contact her with Griezmann over the possible uh, move uh, to Old Trafford. Now Griezmann, I think he's a really, really good player. And I do, and if he did come to Manchester United, he would be, you know, good for him, you know, to come and um, experience, you know, the Premier League facilities um, and all that. And I do believe he would bring them goals uh, to Manchester United, like I said, you know, with Griezmann. But I just don't think he's the fundamental player um, as he was um, a couple of years ago. Um, if I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you, um, obviously, you know, Griezmann. Um, it's going to cost you quite a bit of money. You know, he's, um, his release cost at the moment is 170 odd million pounds. Obviously, you know, at the beginning of the next month, um, his release cost, you know, does uh, reduce uh, to around 104 or 105 million pounds. Obviously, you know, we was on the verge of getting, you know, Griezmann um, a couple of uh, years ago. But obviously, due to Athletic Coventry's transfer ban, you know, the deal uh, never uh, materialised them um, and all that. But, you know, it was, it's been looking likely he's set to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Barcelona. And Barcelona could still get the deal over the line for him. And if they do, I think it's going to be Barcelona's third 100 million pound plus signing like what is it three years or um, something three years something like that because obviously you know Barcelona recently got Coutinho for 142 million obviously you know Usain Dembele yeah, for um, over um, 100 odd million pounds um, and all that um but yeah, he probably still will end up, you know, making uh, the move uh, to Barcelona. But initially, we are planning to hijack Barcelona's move. Griezmann was actually on the verge of joining Barcelona uh, last summer. But obviously, you know, Griezmann um, had remained loyal to Atletico Madrid. You know, he signed him um, a new contract term um, and all that. Uh, but he is uh, 28 years of age, so Griezmann has still got, you know, quite, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, development um, in him. But I just wouldn't be keen on, you know, spending just under £100 million. And like I said, I'd rather spend that £100 million on Joe Felix from Benfica because actually Joe Felix um, is obviously, you know, about 9 or 10 years younger than Griezmann obviously he's got a lot, a lot more development in him uh, than Antoine uh, Griezmann so I wouldn't be keen on us you know beating uh, Griezmann if I'm going to be quite honest with you he is a good player you know like I said you know Griezmann so far has spent the entirety of his career um, in Spain obviously you know he's been at Athletic College you know uh, five years obviously you know he's won the Europa League with them uh, actually, you know, that's the only major honour, you know, major honour Griezmann has won. Griezmann's won, so maybe the main factor reason why he's obviously set to leave Atletico Madrid because maybe he's frustrated with the lack of competitiveness, competitiveness you know, uh, from um, Atletico Madrid um, and all that. That's the only major honour he's won with Atletico Madrid. I think he's scored about 133 goals in 257 uh, games uh, for Atletico Madrid uh, in all competitions um, and all that. Initially, you know, began his uh, career uh, with Real uh, Sociedad, did uh, Antoine uh, Griezmann, but he still says, you know, that Manchester United are uh, in for him, and obviously, you know, we would see him. Uh, 
um, as a replacement uh, for uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku. Um, but yeah, you know, it basically said, you know, that we are still, you know, currently um, in for him. Um, but like I've, I updated you uh, yesterday, you know, good news uh, was coming out um, about uh, David De Gea um, and all that. You know, it's looking likely now, you know, we are going to be uh, getting him um, a new contract, which I'm uh, very, very uh, delighted about. Um, obviously, he did say we was back in talks uh, with De Gea um, over a £350,000 a week deal. Now, reportedly, the club um, are willing to uh, meet um, his £350,000 a week wage demands and all that. I think uh, there has been a three hundred grand a week offer on the table, you know, since like uh, the turn um, of the year. But obviously, you know, this three hundred grand is in obviously not enough to convince him to sign a new contract because obviously that's £50,000 uh, be uh, below than what obviously you know, De Gea um, is demanding but reportedly now we're willing to meet his £350,000 a week wage demands obviously you know, we've been in talks at least for the last you know, should I say 18, 19 months um, to try to uh, get him um, a new contract and all that but at one point he was looking very imminent you know, he was actually you know, going to be uh, leaving uh, Manchester United you know, David De Gea um, obviously you know, he's been heavily linked uh, with a £60 million uh, move uh, to PSG it didn't as you say you know, PSG had to step their in interest up in De Gea because obviously you know PSG um, have lost Buffon obviously you know they're going to want um, a replacement for him um, and all that but I think now PSG have actually opted out of the race because I think they're focusing more um, on Donnarumma uh, from AC Milan um, and all that um but yeah, he was linked to over £60 million uh, move to PSG, but I'm glad he's going to be signing a new contract. You know, we're willing to offer David De Gea a four-year contract uh, with an option uh, to extend it by a third year, so obviously this is um, a five-year uh, deal. Um, but yeah, very happy. You know, he's been a good servant to Manchester United. You know, he has been here eight years. He has made over 300 other appearances um, in all competitions. He's won everything here domestically. You know, he's been at the club, you know, since uh, the Alex Ferguson um, area and all that, but done very, very well uh, for Manchester United. Uh, obviously, we do know Real Madrid um, have been long admirers of him. Obviously, you know, Real Madrid uh, we're on the brink um, of getting him uh, you know, back in 2015 but due to the fax machine uh, the dealer never uh, materialised um, well, I did say uh, if we didn't come to an agreement to get him um, a new contract and all that I said, it I said it was very essential that we did cash in for him this summer rather than letting go um, on a free transfer uh, next year and all that because uh, like I said at full value for the goalkeeper he's definitely worth um, £100 million pounds, but like I said we wouldn't get £100 million because obviously you know, um, he's in uh, the final year of his deal so yeah looking very very likely now where uh, that David De Gea is going to be uh, staying in um, the club so I am uh, very very um, happy um, about that um like I said, I've already given you the latest news about one matter. Obviously, you know, we've got him um, a two year contract. Uh, there's an option uh, to extend it uh, by further year. So we do know that now that uh, one matter um, is currently you know, going to be uh, staying. Um, obviously, you know, Rashford, he's in the final year of his deal. But I think we are set to get, you know, Marcus Rashford um, a contract term um, extension. I think that's been a problem with Manchester United, though. We have, you know, to be fair, you know, let far too many uh, players' uh, contracts uh, run down. But yeah, with Rashford, I think we're going to get him um, a new contract. We've been in talks for quite some time um, of getting uh, Marcus Rashford um, a new contract. Um, Obviously, like I said, he's in the final year of his deal. Um, but, you know, I know he's been inconsistent in the last couple of months as Marcus Rashford, but he still um, is a long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. Um like uh, currently said, so I do presume we're going to get him a new contract. Um, obviously, we got we give Anthony Martial a new five-year deal back in January. We give quite a few players new contracts last season. Martial a new five-year deal back in January. We give Scott Montominway a new contract. We give Small and Jones you know, a new long-term contract. What's, what what was a mistake for Manchester United? We, you know, we give Ashley Young a new one-year extension. That was obviously no mistake uh, by Manchester United and all that. Um, but yeah, there's been quite a few players' contracts. Uh, we have uh, renewed them um, and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very happy, you know, with the, uh, the, with the uh, David De Gea one, to be quite honest with you. But like I said, looking likely, um, I, I do presume my next two signings, like I said on my previous video, um, are going to be Bruno Fernandes and they're going to be uh, Anwan Basaka uh, from Crystal Palace. We want to get the deal finalised for Anwan Basaka and then obviously, you know, we'll look on uh, getting uh, the deal uh, finalised uh, for Bruno Fernandes. You know, Basaka will improve us defensively, you know, massively. Uh, I think he'll do very, very well um, at that right back position. I think Bruno Fernandes uh, will do very, very well um, in our midfield because he'll have depth in our midfield. He'll bring them goals uh, that we need uh, in that midfield. So that's a uh, very, very very good news. Um with Harry Maguire, like I've already given you an update on, it's looking likely you no, know, he's uh, going to be uh, going uh, to Manchester City, um, according uh, to recent uh, reports. Um, obviously, I've given you the news uh, today um, about uh, Matty's uh, delay uh, for Mike's. Obviously, you know, he was one of our major uh, priority targets um, at one point, uh, main priority targets um, at one point, but obviously now it's looking very imminent You know that Matty's uh, delay um, is going to be uh, joining you know, Juventus. I think he's made a decision on his future, and you know, Matty's delay um, is set to uh, join uh, Juventus um, as, he, as he has uh, confirmed. Um, I think Juventus um obviously set to get him in a set to get him for around I think uh, sixty two uh, million uh, pounds or something um, like that. I think Juventus have offered him you know um, a five year uh, contract um 
I think, you know, they have not yet uh, come to an agreement um, on the terms um, of Juventus um, and Ajax because I think, you know, Matty Stilic's um, agent, uh, Riley Ola, has actually, you know, um, informed, uh, you know, uh, Juventus, you know, to make Matty Stilic, you know, their second highest played player, you know, behind uh, Cristiano Ronaldo um, and all that. And I think Riley Ola is holding out of a fee of at least um, around 10.3 million. Of course, if, you know, Matty Stilic uh, um, is to uh, make um, his move uh, to Juventus um, and all that. But like I said, you know, so many teams um, have inquired um, about um, his services. Obviously, it came out about 10 days ago. 11 days ago saying that PSG you know were considered as one of the favourites you know Riley Ola had been speaking you know with PSG sporting director and he also said that PSG had offered him a five year contract uh, with around uh, £340,000 a week <coughs> but I think you know um Matty Stilic, you know, uh, future um, has definitely you know, been uh, sorted out now and I think he's going to be uh, making uh, the move uh, to Juventus but he did initially say that, you know, the two uh, fit teams that were considered to be the favourites, you know, to get him the other week was actually, you know, Barcelona and PSG. They were doing at least in the last couple of months anyway, uh, that Barcelona um, had been uh, the favourites um, and all that. Obviously, Barcelona have already got a deal over the line for his current uh, teammate, Frankie de Jong, who, of course, uh, they paid uh, £65 million for. Well, maybe at that point, Matty Slater was keen on reuniting uh, with his teammate. And he looked very, very imminent at one point. You know, he was going to be uh, going uh, to Barcelona. But I think, you know, Barcelona had obviously, you know, ended their interest in him and all that. And they've moved away from it now. Because uh, obviously, you know, Barcelona basically, you know, were not willing to meet what the was demanding, what his agent Raliola was demanding. So basically, you know, Barcelona, you know, struggled uh, to come to um, uh, the, uh, any, you know, come to an agreement um, on the terms um, and all that. Obviously, you know, we'd, like I said, you know, we'd been in there for him. You know, he it said, you know, we'd offered him around a £350,000 a week contract. Um, at one point, it, you know, it was looking likely he was going to accept that contract and come to Old Trafford because he even notified his representatives a while back that, that he was willing to accept you know a Manchester United's contract offer 350 grand a week you know equates to almost 17 million pounds a year and um I think, you know, obviously if that would have that would have processed it and make him the highest played, you know, um, you know, teenager in world football, also make him one of the highest played players um, at Manchester United. Obviously, as you all know, Liverpool had inquired him about um, his services, as you all know, Liverpool has been even been in there for him. Like I said, the main factor reason why Liverpool were in for Matty Stillet, because obviously, you know, Liverpool, Virgil van Dijk and Matty Stillet, you know, know each other really, really well and all that. And obviously, you know, they you don't know, do know they definitely blend in, in in you know Liverpool's back line really well. And obviously they complement each other, and this is why Liverpool were in for him. Because Virgil van Dijk and Matty Stillet have um, got um, a good uh, relationship um, and all that. Uh, but Liverpool obviously are no longer in for him now. At one point, you know, Man even Manchester City, you know, were in uh, for uh, Matty Stillet. Uh, Bayern Munich, I think, were also in for him. But I think, you know, obviously, you know, they adopted out of the race, Bayern Munich. So, yeah, being widely spoken about uh, for while uh, the course of this window. And he has been subjected uh, to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. But he did say, you know, he was, you know, going to make a decision on his future um, after the Na Na Nations League. Something Nations League, he said, um, something um, like that. Um, but yeah, it's looking likely, you know, he's going to be, a, you know, going uh, to Juventus, um, his Matty Serdelet. But like I said, really, really good central defender. He's only uh, 19 uh, years of age, you know, so far. I've spent the entirety um, of his career uh, with Ajax. I think he's been a nice player since, what, the age of eight, the age of nine and all that. Obviously, he's been in their senior squad since uh, the age of 17. That's when he made his senior debut, obviously. Um, you know, got I think got named captain um, at the age of 18 and all that. And obviously, you know, last season, enjoyed a great season with Ajax. You know, Ajax last season won the domestic double for the first time um, in 17 years. Also won the Eredivisie title against the Champions League semi final. I think also Matty Stillet is the only defender you know, to win, uh, win uh, the Golden Boy Award. And I think you know he actually you know won this uh, last year um, and all that. But you know he was one of um, our main uh, targets, like I said, uh, Matty Stillet. But I think he did say, you know, he wants to go to a club that have got Champions League football. And I think he also wants to go to a club, you know, that can assure him uh, first team uh, football and all that. So basically, he's going to be uh, rejuvenating, uh, rejuvenating um, his career. Um, his Matty's still in taking his footballing career to the next level. But I do believe he would be a good signing for Juventus. But, you know, Juventus have got quite um, a few uh, targets um, on their um, agenda, obviously. Uh, obviously, Paul Pop is on their agenda. You know, Tango and Dombele from Leon um, is on their, their um, agenda. And some people say, how can, you know, Juventus, you know, afford uh, Matty said lit? But I did unless you say, in terms of the transfer fees, he's going to cost you between probably 60 to 70 odd million pounds because that's what um, obviously you know um, is initially you know rated at um, like I currently said but it came out from Sky Italy you know today that obviously you know he's made a decision on his future and Sky Italy said um, that he's uh, you know he's chosen her to make uh, the move uh, to Juventus um, and all that but it's not being fully finalised as yet some reports have said the, si the fee of 62 million has been agreed um, and all that but the actual personal the actual terms have not yet you know come to an agreement so basically I think Juventus will will are uh, obviously you know willing to meet anywhere what is you know agent Rally or um, is the Demanding. So basically, Raliola wants you know the lit to be the second highest player player um, at Juventus. So this is what you know Raliola wants from um, his client. Um, 
But yeah, like I said, you know, that's uh, mainly everything to update you today. And I think the one disappointing thing is that we know we're not expected to appoint a sporting director. And I'm very annoyed about this because obviously, you know, that's uh, the structural change uh, that we did uh, need in the club. Um, is uh, getting um, a director there for footballing. And, you know, we've, we've tried we've tried getting a director of footballing um, at least uh, for the last uh, couple of uh, months. Um, and all that, you know, there were so many, you know, names uh, linked to that director's role. And obviously now it's looking like we're not going to get a sporting director in. So obviously Ed Woodward um, is going to be um, overseeing um, our transfer business uh, this summer. Um, and all that but yeah looking like the Basaka is going to be coming in then Bruno Fernandes then hopefully get another two more signings on the board um, after that because Solskjaer wants to bring um, at least uh, five new players uh, to the squad but like I said, you know, we do need a um, massive um, overhaul uh, this summer. But the main part of this video was to give you the latest news about Bruno Fernandes and all that. Reportedly now, like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has, has obviously, you know, urged Ed Woodward, you know, to speed up, you know, the signing uh, for Bruno Fernandes and all that. Maybe we're set to going to, we may get him for around maybe 50 or 60 odd million pounds. Like I said, Sporting Lisbon, you know, do uh, want um, at least uh, 62 million pounds, I think. Um, but yeah, now we've had, you know, negotiations with his agent and all that, you know, it did say we are preparing to put a bid in for him of around 49 million pounds. But anyway, guys, uh, drop your quiet slides below on the channel. Um, if you do consider uh, subscribe, um, as always, uh, I always enjoy you know talking to you guys um, on this uh, channel. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very very soon. Thanks for watching.